Hello there. In this command line video, we're going to be looking at working with a MySQL database. And so we're going to look at how to get in, take a look around, uh, and do some queries all from the command line rather than using a GUI interface with something like phpMyAdmin. So to start off, uh, the first thing we need to do is actually get in there. So MySQL is the command, and if I did just that, uh, I would go into MySQL and be able to do some things. Um, but I want to work with specific databases, which means I need to have permissions, which means I need to be a particular user. So dash u will let me put in the username that I would like to connect to MySQL with. Uh, and so I'm going to go in as the root user here. Uh, and this user does have a password, and so I do tash, dash p, and I could type the password in, but normally it's best practice to just use dash p, and instead of typing the password in in plain text, it will then prompt me, uh, and I can type it in at that point so that someone looking over my shoulder won't see the password in plain text. You'll notice I now have a MySQL prompt. Uh, which looks quite a bit different than my regular shell prompt here. So I know that I'm actually in uh, the MySQL world at this point. I've also logged in as a, as a privileged user who can do everything uh, in my MySQL. So I can create databases. Uh, you need to be in as a user with proper permissions to do the things you need to. Now to create a database, create database is simply what we need to do. And then I type a database name. Um, and then I put a semicolon at the end here, uh, and that creates a database. It's that simple, and it's very uh, straightforward. So we can take a look and see what I did, and show databases will list all the databases, and you can see that foo is listed here now. It was that simple to create it. Now once I have the database created, um, the next thing you typically want to do, uh, especially when dealing with web applications and such, is create a particular user for just that database so that uh, I don't need to put connection information for my root user. So I'm going to grant all permissions on and then I say which database foo and then the dot star means all tables within it. I'm going to grant those permissions on the foo database to a particular user. So I'll put a username in here, whatever username I want. I'll call them bar dev. Uh, and you'll notice I'm putting that inside the, those little quote marks. And then at, and then I need to give the location where this user is going to be connecting from, which is localhost, most common um, place, unless there's a separate database server with a different IP and other things. But localhost is typical. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is give this user a password. So I'm going to say identified by which will signify the password, and then I can type the password in as a string. So I'll use the word secret, and again do my little semicolon to end that. So I'm granting all permissions on the foo database, all tables, to the new user bar dev um, from localhost is the server, and then I'm setting up the password as a secret. Uh, and you can look these kinds of things up, but I just want to show you th what this one string creates the new user, sets the password, and gives them all permissions on the database. Um, and so that's now done. And if I exit out of my SQL here, and I'm going back to my regular shell, I'm going to log into back into my SQL as this new user just to show you that it, it works. So the user's bar dev, I'll type in my password. Um, and now if I do show databases, now, instead of getting that big list, I'm just getting the list that uh, I have access to as bar dev. So you see foo and some basic MySQL uh, databases in there, and that's it. That's all I have access to. So I'm going to go back in as the root user here. Um, so I have all the permissions. And another thing, the major thing we want to do with databases is to get rid of them. And so instead of creating the database, I want to drop the database foo. Uh, and now when we go to look, uh, do a show databases, listing them all, you'll see that foo is now gone. So that easily create it, that easily get rid of it. So just be careful, make sure you know what you're doing. It's very quick and easy to do. Okay, so that's sort of major uh, database and creating a user. I now want to actually work in this particular database that already exists here, the six Drupal database. So to work in a particular one, I want to use. So the command is use and then the database name. So I'm going to use the six Drupal database. 
Um, you can see I've now changed into that particular database. Um, and now let's, again, let's take a look and see what we have. So I'm going to show the tables so I can see what all the different tables in this database are. So you can see I have 73, and I can scroll up. Um, in particular, I want to look at this, this cache table here. So if I want to get more information about a particular table, instead of using show from here, I can say describe. I actually want to get some more information about this particular table. So I'm going to describe cache, the table name. And here it lists the fields. Um, so like I have a CID, the expire. Those are the different fields. You can see I can see what type of field they are. Um, and so I have a sense of the kind of da data that I'm working with. Now if I want to get in there and actually see what the contents are, I would do a regular SQL query. So I'm going to select the CIDs from the cache table. And that gives me a list. You can see I have returned four rows. So there are four rows in there. And then this is the actual contents. Um, so I can see I have stuff in there. Uh, and what I want to do is I actually want to clear this out. Um, I don't want to delete the table, but I want to empty all of the rows so that it's, it's a clean table again. Uh, and the way that we do that is the truncate command. So drop would delete the whole thing. Truncate just sort of empties it. So I'll truncate the cache table. I'll go ahead and run that. And if I redo that select statement, you'll see that now there's empty. There, there are no contents in there now. So I just went ahead and kind of cleaned it out. Um, I didn't mean to do show databases. I was going to do show table, right? So um, just to show, th so the cache table is still there. I didn't actually delete the, the entire table. The empty table is still there. Um, it's just no actual content right now. So those are both handy things to know, dropping and truncating. And so, I mean, from here, you can, you know, I can pretty much also just do SQL queries um, and find out data. So I can do, say, I'll just do a select um, the node ID and title from the node table. And here's, here's a list of all the nodes that are on my site um, by title. Um, you can also do updates, so I could change things. A very common thing in the Drupal, well, not common, but a common, oh my god, what do I do thing, is uh, when you've lost the um, user1 password. So I can actually do that directly in the database because I can't do it through the site. So I update the users table. I want to set the password equal to a new password. But uh, Drupal does MD5 hashing on the passwords, so I can use the MD5 function here, pass the password into that, and definitely want to say where UID equal 1. I don't want to change the password for all of my users. But uh, so that simple, that line right there will reset the password for my Drupal site. Um, and uh, that's pretty much go nuts. Um, you now have access to everything that you need um, using SQL from the command line. And it can be a lot faster than trying to find the right place to point and click. Uh, and again, if you're on a server that doesn't have something like PHPMyAdmin to work with, you could still get done the tasks that you need to do.